Und wo wir bei guten Menschen und ihrem bewundernswerten Engagement sind, da sollten wir auch über Ärzte ohne Grenze sprechen oder besser noch mit Ärzte ohne Grenzen und über die äh, Einsätze, die Unterstützung ihrer Einsätze durch eine, wen nimmt es Wunder, Geodatenplattform. Ich habe mit Eloise Neff und Mathieu Supar von Ärzte ohne Grenzen gesprochen. Mathieu, tell me, when did MSF start investigating GIS? The first milestone in our, of our journey was um, a bit organic. Uh, we, in, in fact, um, MSF was um, launching a vector control program in uh, Cap Verde uh, in response to a dengue epidemic. Mm -hmm. and, and there was an acute need in order to set up that uh, vector control activity. There was an acute need to uh, have a, a, a special understanding of the epidemics, to be able to understand the, the nest of the mosquito and to make sure that we were Uh, targeting the proper area. And that was mm -hmm. um, a very practical demonstration on, on the added value of GIS, of humanitarian GIS. And indeed, from there, we have opened our eyes and be interested in the, mm -hmm. in the humanitarian GIS at large. Then what would you say do GIS systems mean for MSF today? Our vision, uh, as regards the GIS applied to MSF, It's within the overall uh, definition of humanitarian GIS, but it's very specific, specific because we are a very operational organization and medical organization, medically focused, of course. Um, MSF, um, as I said, is operationally rooted, so any support, any system that we put in place must be operationally rooted too, and it provides an added value in supporting our operations. It is not what it was not initially thought to be in support of operational research, medical medical mm -hmm. research whatsoever. It was really there mm -hmm. to be practical and to bring an added value to our operation. So what is the added, this added value is the ability for our operation, our decision maker, to visualize and, and analyze um, geospatial data um, for context understanding and then with that context understanding it they can be supported in, in decision making planning monitoring reporting or later on communication activities mm -hmm. so this is this is the angle this is the purpose of gis in msf and Mathieu, uh, i know that you started a transformative program four years ago tell us about it please The adventure of GIS and, and, and GIS grew organically a bit in, in MSF. We were at, 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 for a certain period, we were in demonstration mode. And then we have uh, around the, the Ebola crisis, uh, we have uh, demonstrated the really added value, especially in, in uh, being able mm -hmm. to monitor epidemics. Um, so there were more and more users within, within MSF. MSF, it's a large organization with more than uh, 50,000 uh, employees. So um, if, if there is a need, the need is uh, by definition of large scale. Um, and um, we perceive the need, we identify the need to scale up or set up to have better process and to be better equipped, whether uh, it's IT infrastructure or software. And this is why we have uh, requested a, a budgetary envelope to transform that initiative, the GIS unit, the initial GIS unit, into something else, really to scale up that, uh, that setup and our capacity. And Eloise, how do you especially use ESRI software? What do you do with it? What does it do for you? So following the transformative program uh, that was uh, done four years ago, uh, the S3 technology was put at many places in our uh, global geographic information system, so at MSF, because this is really a complex ecosystem with various aspects. Mm -hmm. The very first uh, people who are using uh, the S3 technology are, uh, are our uh, GI specialists. So both at project uh, field level in our missions, uh, but also uh, remotely at HQ headquarters level, uh, our mapping team. And they use ArcMap and we are slowly migrating to ArcGIS Pro, which provides us many other tools.
Uh, from a, a more global perspective, our global um, geographic information system is built around the S3 technologies. So the heart of it is our this enterprise. We saw the server, the portal, and everything else. So this is really uh, the, the heart of the system that provides all the data to our various uh, tools, which can be either uh, S3 or custom de developed ones. Mm -hmm. So in the custom web application that we also implement, uh, so there was one big achievement from the, uh, from the transformative program. So we built our own portal, so the GeoMSF platform, and uh, there is a, map, uh, a mapper, a map viewer in it, which is also using, so of course, all the data coming from the uh, Argis Enterprise, but also the uh, S3 app API. So you can see in our global GIS, S3 technology are a bit of everywhere, and we are trying to see that as a, as a global thing. Mm -hmm. One last point, uh, uh, thing that we are also using from day to day is really the Argis Online uh, tool, which is really helpful for us uh, to build rapidly dashboards or small web applications uh, with, uh, of course, uh, geospatial data visualization. And what can MSF do with GIS and with S3 solutions that you couldn't do otherwise, or at least not as good by several orders of magnitude? So, as I said, uh, S3 mm -hmm. provides like really a suite of, of tools that are kind of well integrated. So this is right. uh, the, really the, uh, the good aspect uh, of, uh, of S3. Uh, and also the, uh, all the tools allow, allowing our G-specialists building quickly some web application are really uh, uh, an added value uh, that, are, uh, that, that we see every day and that are really requested by uh, by operations, in fact. Thank you. We talked about your transformative program. Uh, I would love to know how far along is that transformation and especially what are your next goals? What are your visions for the future? Mathieu, maybe you want to go first. First of all, the challenge, the, the initial challenge was to be able to conduct a transformational program in parallel of delivering the daily service to mm -hmm. operation. So that was really a parallel track. So then uh, tracks. Um, then the, the next challenge was the, the ability to absorb the outcome of that transformative program, which was a heavy investment from the organization during three years with a specific dedicated team, uh, and to absorb it into now the scale up, uh, the GIS uh, unit uh, 2.0 uh, uh, system. So for the moment, we are a bit in a stabilization period where we really want to Take, uh, um, take benefit of, of that investment for three years to make it function, make it available to our, to our staff. Of course, there'll be new investment, there'll be new adventure. We know already that what the stakes for us is to make our uh, personnel in the field or staff in the field more autonomous for, for, for basic activities. So then they can do their own uh, GIS analysis which does not require being a specialist, but we, they are specialists in their domain, not in GIS, and they would use basic activities, base, basic uh, capacity of GIS to be able to perform their, uh, their own uh, short-term planification, monitoring, and, and, and so forth. So a certain level of autonomy at field level is one. Um, another mm -hmm. axis also uh, is to provide mobile solution. In two, in two different categories. One category is able to do mobile data collection in one sense, and on the other sense, to be able to visualize uh, geo products that we make available to them on a di digital format. Those are the main stakes for, for the future. And Eloise, uh, what is your vision for the future? What are you looking forward to? From the technical aspect, I totally uh, agree with Mathieu, of course, about the mobile solutions. Uh, this is really the future. More practically, I would say to make sure that the end users are autonomous on the field, uh, we need to make sure that with uh, a, a low access uh, to internet, with low connectivity, we need to make sure that uh, even in this condition, the uh, geo products we provide based on S3 technology are still uh, are available in good conditions to them. So this is the main challenge, I would say, uh, for the for the coming year, just to focus again uh, on on the uh, MSF field staff.
And of course, we wish you all uh, very much success with that. Uh, good luck with your transition to Arcus Pro. Uh, you do very important work, and we hope that everything runs smoothly and the Esri Solutions play their part in making the world a better place. So thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank you.